Hello everyone, welcome back to Scotland and welcome back to the uh, Lindor's Abbey Whiskey Distillery Chess Stars Tournament. It's Magnus Carlsen versus his old rival Sergei Karakin. Uh, as you all know, uh, the two of them have played the World Chess Championship match in 2016, uh, which uh, Carlsen won. Obviously, he's still the champion. And it's really a crazy game, uh, the, the whiskey immortal, if you will. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Uh, so uh, without further ado, let's just check it out. Uh, and uh, I just want to say I do appreciate that you enjoyed the little sip of whiskey. But uh, uh, until I acquire a, at least a, a, a better one, uh, I don't think I will be making the other thing. Uh, maybe next year, if they repeat this tournament, uh, I will try to acquire a better one, and then maybe we can have some sips before uh, before checking out the games. As the one I have is really just uh, well, uh, it's re really disgusting. Uh, so, uh, without further ado, let's check it out. Uh, Carlson has the white pieces and he opens with d4, as it was already on the board. Uh, we have knight to f6, knight to f3, sorry about that. Uh, we have d5, uh, and now Carlson doesn't go for c4, but rather g3. Uh, so, sort of a Catalan setup. We have g6, bishop to g2, bishop to g7. Uh, Karakin follows uh, everything Carlsen does, so we have a nice symmetrical variation. We have castles, castles, uh, and here c3 by Carlsen. Uh, in the Côte d'Ivoire blitz uh, section uh, that we covered uh, some uh, a few days ago, uh, knight b to d2 was played here by Maxime Vachir Lagrave, uh, and he defeated Wei Yi with this line. But here Carlsen goes for a different one. We have c3, knight bd7, uh, we have bishop to f4, uh, and now c5. Uh, just, uh, you know, don't want any backwards pawn. If white allows it, why not push it all the way? Uh, we have knight to e5, and now queen to b6, putting pressure on the b2 pawn, also pressuring the center here, uh, and Carlsen does the same. We have queen to b3, offers a queen trade, uh, and we have c captures on d4 by Karakin. Queen captures on b6, we have knight captures... <coughs> Uh, knight captures on b6, and now c captures uh, on d4. And pretty much uh, uh, an equalish position uh, has been reached once before in 1994 uh, between uh, Bosnian Grandmaster Emir Dizdarevic and Croatian Grandmaster Mladen Palac, uh, although I don't think they were Grandmasters back then, but uh, uh, for example, they agreed to a draw in this position. Uh, but Carlsen and Karakin uh, didn't come here to make such quick draws, so we have knight to e4 by Karakin. Uh, and uh, it's interesting that this position uh, now, <laughs> knight to e4 is a new move by Karakin. This position uh, hasn't been reached for 25 years. So, it'll, like I said, last time it was played in 1994. Uh, with knight to e4 by Karakin, and now rook to c1, Carlsen adapts to the uh, to the deviation and continues playing. So, grabbing hold of this very nice open file, rook to c7 will always be a, an interesting idea. Uh, so, we have knight back to d6, going back. Uh, and here comes knight to c3, just developing. Uh, and here, bishop to e6. Uh, you have to be careful. If you play something like e6, you could ha easily hang your knight here. Just knight captures and g6 opens up an attack against your knight. Uh, so, bishop to e6. Sometimes you have to develop this way, even though the bishop now blocks your pawn, but it is only temporarily. We have a4 by Carlsen, grabbing more space on the queen side, preparing a5. So, we have a5 by Karkin, not allowing a5. And now just h4, uh, grabbing even more space on the king side, preparing h5, perhaps in some lines. Uh, we have rook f to c8, and now comes b3, uh, just defending the f4 pawn, also uh, not allowing this knight any squares. Uh, we have rook to c7, Karakin prepares to double up uh, on the c file, and Carlsen doesn't allow it. We have knight to b5, attacking the rook forces uh, a trade of rooks, and now Carlsen grabs hold of the open c file. We have rook captures, rook captures, and now knight captures on b5. A captures on b5, and only now rook to c8. So Carlsen with the doubled b pawns, as usual, uh, as you all know, Carlsen does not mind uh, <laughs> doubling his pawns. He somehow always uh, turns it into a strength. Uh, and here, rook to c5. Of course, not capturing, you don't gain anything by this. Uh, but here, uh, of course, you want black to capture. If black captures, you improve your pawn structure. Here, you will push c6, create a pass pawn. Will be a very, very nice uh, position for white. So, of course, Karakin isn't interested. Uh, he starts bringing his king into the game. We have king to f8, and now e4 by Carlsen, uh, trying to bust open the position here. We have a4 by Karakin, and here we have... Uh, 
a critical position, if you will. Uh, it's a critical position because uh, Carlsen has to decide what to do here. Uh, there are a lot of interesting uh, ideas. For example, Carlsen could go for rook captures on c8, and this pretty much trades everything, and we go into this drawish endgame after bishop captures on c8, b captures on a4, knight captures on a4, and now e captures on d5. Grabs a pawn, uh, but still, it's a double the d pawn, and after knight c3, going after the b5 pawn, b6, knight a4, you will recapture here, you, uh, black will have a passed b pawn, you, the material on the board will be equal. Uh, so sort of an equalish position. Uh, so that's one way to do it for Carlson, but he's not interested in that. He goes e captures on d5, and uh, I wasn't following the game. I was, uh, you know, uh, chilling uh, outside yesterday. So, uh, but I did manage to catch uh, uh, this position on the Twitter feed of the Chess24 website where uh, everything was blinking. Uh, a blunder, a blunder. Uh, so feel free to pause the video here and try to figure out why everyone was saying blunder, blunder. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds uh, for those of you who are interested in perhaps finding this blunder. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent spotter of blunders, if we will call them that. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, the move uh, is a3. And this is what Carlsen uh, seems to, uh, seem to have missed. Uh, the point is now, after a3, uh, we have d captures on e6, and now a2, uh, you will not be able to prevent the pawn from queening. You have to go knight d7 check. Now, of course, you don't want to capture here because then white also gets a queen. Uh, but after king g8, you get knight captures on b6, pawn to a1 with queen. This comes with check. King to h2, and now you can play rook to d8. And here you have this position where you have some pressure. And uh, you have a queen for basically uh, a knight and the bishop. Uh, so two pieces for the queen. Black's position will be better, and black's position is to, to be preferred here. Uh, but Karakin didn't go for a3. After Carlsen's e captures on d5, Carlsen uh, went for a different line. He played first rook captures on c5. Uh, we have d captures on c5 and only now a3. But now it's a little bit different. First d captures on e6 by Carlsen. Uh, we have uh, we have a2 by Karakin and now knights to d7 check. Uh, and again, we've said that this doesn't work, but we're just going to show why it doesn't work. Uh, if uh, knight captures, you get e captures and now a1 queen with check, king to h2 and now queen d4 preventing the pawn from queening. Uh, but now white has a, a super blocking move, bishop to d6, now just threatening uh, pawn to d8. And uh, well, uh, there's really no good defense here. Whatever you do, let's say you capture, then just... Uh, d8 queen and uh, you've checkmated black so not an option so here after this check uh, Car uh, Karkin went king to uh, sorry not a g8 king to e8 and now we have knight captures on b6 and now uh, Karkin gets a queen into the game with check we have king to h2 and now if you look at this position, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a different position than uh, the one that we've said that was uh, really really good for Karakin. So here you have this position where Karakin only has a queen and a bishop against a bishop pair and a knight. Plus White has these two excellent connected pawns. Uh, whereas the position that we already discussed uh, was this. Uh, where Carlson's pawns are not connected, Carlson, Kar Karkin still has a rook, the rooks haven't been traded off, and he has uh, a lot more options. So this was a better line to choose from. Uh, so uh, after this, king t8, like we said, knight captures on b6, uh, a1 with check, king h2, and now comes bishop to e5. Kar uh, sorry, bishop to e5, uh, Karkin offers a trade of bishops. Uh, with bishop to e3, Carlson declines as now he has to. He still has to fight. He's still hoping to create a pass pawn here, somehow push it uh, all the way to victory. And here you can't defend the b7 pawn. Just to give you an example, if queen a7 defending c6, uh, and now after bishop to c7, blocking and attacking the knight, you get c captures on b7. Bishop captures on b6, but now bishop to c6 check. And after the king moves, king f8, now you get bishop to h6 check, king moves, and now bishop to f4. Uh, will queen the pawn, and now white will just be uh, up a piece. Uh, so not an option. Here, Karagin played f captures on e6, and now we have bishop captures on b7. Carlsen now eliminates the b7 pawn, and now he has two connected pass pawns, which he is uh, more than ready to push. Uh, we have bishop back to d4, offering a trade. Now you can't repeat, because you lose the f2 pawn, so knight to c4. Uh, here, Carlsen uh, defends, and... Uh, 
Karakin, uh, Karakin is able to grab the upper hand here. We have bishop captures on e3, knight captures on e3, uh, and now queen to b2 uh, by Karakin going after the f2 pawn. But also an interesting idea uh, was queen to a5, just attacking the pawn here, and only after bishop to c6 check, king d8, now you go... Uh, uh, knight to c4, attacking the queen, and after queen to b4, you will eliminate the c5 pawn, there is no way to defend it, and Carlsen would be left with two uh, doubled pawns here on the b file. Uh, but after knight captures on e3, we have queen to b2, going after the f2 pawn, Car uh, Carlsen defends, king g2, and now comes uh, queen captures on b3. So this way, Karakin eliminates the b3 pawn, uh, but Carlsen still has two connected pass pawns. So again, different. Uh, for the uh, for the second time in a row, uh, Karakin misses a crucial continuation uh, to grab the uh, the much needed advantage. Uh, and here we have b6. So a much better uh, pawn structure for Carlsen than the line we've shown where, where he could have uh, ended up with a doubled b pawn. Uh, we have queen to b5, and now comes bishop back to f3. Uh, Carlsen still isn't interested, uh, sorry, Karkin isn't interested in grabbing the c5 pawn just yet, uh, but, uh, you know, he, he will he will uh, g get to it. We have king to d8, now comes b7, the pawn is now nicely protected by the bishop, king to c7, and now comes c6. So although Carlsen has his pawns protected over here, uh, the king does an excellent job by uh, blocking both of them, and the knight doesn't really have a good way uh, of entering the position to help out with the pushing of the pawns. Uh, we have queen to b4. And now uh, we have g4, uh, Carlsen pushes uh, on the king side, we have queen to d4, and now comes knight to f1. Carlsen uh, still trying to make it work, but, uh, you know, just in case it doesn't work, it's important to create a fortress so the white queen will not be able to break through, uh, which is, of course, always a challenge for Carlsen. As you all know, Carlsen does not believe in fortresses. Uh, we have h5, and now comes g captures on h5. Uh, we have g captures on h5, and now knight back to g3, going after the h5 pawn now. We have e5 by Karakin. Now, of course, you cannot capture because e4 will be just uh, very annoying. Bishop e2, queen can go to d5. Now, you will start losing the pawns here, as you cannot protect both the pawn and the knight on, uh, on h5. Uh, the bishop cannot uh, cover both tasks. So, after e5, we have knight to e4, just blocking the pawn. Uh, and now comes queen to c4. Again, attacking the pawn here, but now knight to g5. Uh, we have king to b8 by Karkin, and now bishop to e4 blocking, uh, and queen to e2, uh, but just bishop to f5. Carlsen still trying to create some chances if this knight could somehow miraculously get over to a6 to check the king, or perhaps to d7 to check the king, it would be great because then you could uh, queen, queen the pawn with check. Uh, but uh, Karkin will do everything in his power to prevent that. We have e4. Uh, now, you have to be careful, if you move the knight, then queen f3 check, could pick up the bishop, then you're lost. Uh, so, knight captures on e4 by Carlsen, we have queen to c4 now, uh, knight goes back to g3, and now, finally, grabbing the c6 pawn, queen captures on c6. We have bishop to e4, as uh, you're in check, you have to block with the bishop, otherwise you're losing the b7 pawn, then you're just lost. Uh, we have bishop to e4, blocking, and now queen to f6. Uh, and here, knight captures on h5. Attacking the queen, we have queen captures on h4, and now comes knight to g3. Uh, and believe it or not, it was in this position on move 49 that uh, Carlsen and Karakin agreed to a draw. As there is no no way for either of them to make progress, uh, there, there's even, I mean... Uh, it would be uh, more likely for white to somehow man somehow win this than for black because well black would have to blunder if black plays precisely then there's no way uh, but there's no way for black to make progress you can't move the bishop the knight is uh, guarding it uh, pawn, gu pawn guards the knight king guards the pawn bishop guards the b7 pawn there's no way to make progress you cannot push the pawn uh, as uh, even if you move the bishop back and forth, the knight and bishop are still uh, controlling the e4 square, so there is no way to make progress here. You can't give any checks because the bishop uh, controls the only diagonal uh, from which the, the black queen could deliver check, so it's just a dead draw, and it would seem Carlsen has created a fortress here. Uh, so even though he d uh, he doesn't believe in fortresses, it would seem that he only doesn't believe in fortresses when someone is trying to create a fortress against him. When he tries to create a fortress, then it I, it would seem it's okay to create a fortress. Uh, but yeah, 
Uh, the, here they <laughs> agreed to a draw, uh, a very important draw for Carlsen, as this draw assured him uh, first place in this uh, Chess Stars uh, Lindor's Abbey tournament. And I did prepare the stats here. Here are the stats. Uh, there you see uh, Carlsen with three and a half, uh, Ding and Karakin tied in second with. Uh, three points but ding with some better additional criteria and Vishwanathan Anand in fourth place with two and a half points uh seems he still uh, <clears throat> uh didn't uh, adjust in time for the for the cold Scottish weather and um he played an excellent second day, but in the first day he he, he lost the game and uh, had two draws. Uh, but Carlson, the only player without uh, without any any losses, he achieves his fifth vic fifth win in a tournament uh, this year. So already he won five tournaments, and I believe this is his sixth uh, tournament victory in a row. So he won uh, six tournaments in a row that he has played in. Uh, next he uh, he goes to uh, Altibox Norway ch Championship, which will start uh, I believe on third of June, and then uh, they are all coming crazy. Uh, in Zagreb to continue the Grand Chess Tour, so we will have some uh, a lot of chess going on, uh, you know, for for the next uh, two, month and a half and two, two months basically. Uh, but yeah, uh, and uh, uh, Anand is also very much responsible for Carlson claiming first place here because if uh, Anand did, uh, hadn't defeated Ding Liren, then Ding Liren would have won the tournament uh, with with four points, uh, half a point ahead of Magnus Carlson. So even though uh, Anand uh, finished uh, last year, he, he helped Carlsen to, <laughs> to clinch first place. Uh, and also as a special bonus in this video, uh, I would, uh, I would uh, like to wish a happy birthday to Michael. Uh, here his fiance sent me this photo. This is Michael. As you can see, he's enjoying a nice beer. And uh, she asked if I could uh, transfer this message to you. Happy 25th birthday to you, Michael. Uh, fulfill, fulfill your passions and keep on exploring. The chess world will always be mysterious and incredible. Uh, with love from your fiance, Susan. So there we have it. Uh, also wishing you a very happy birthday. Hope you had a nice beer or you know more of them and uh, you know don't forget to study the end game uh, it's uh, it's uh, the the best part uh, so yeah, uh, that being said, uh, I would like to thank uh, Biba and Rolf GBR, Knights Bar Restaurant, Patricia King, uh, Simon Johansson, and Dennis Desormia for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. We still have to cover the finals of the FIDE Grand Prix, and then uh, we uh, up until the Altibox Norway ch Championship, we will be continuing the Capablanca saga, and of course, checking up on your suggestions. So yeah, uh, there you have it, the Whiskey Immortal. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Have an excellent rest of your uh, day.